If I could sing an ending song of how you saved my soul, and I could dance a thousand miles because of your great love. How are y'all this morning? And it's a good day to be here, isn't it? Thank you, Lord, for allergies, right? Yeah, thank you, Lord. Hey, if this is your first time here, I want to say welcome. We are honored that you are here. We are glad that you are here. And if you can do me a favor, if you can raise your hand, and we want to put in your hand uh, a card. And on that card, we want just a little bit of information from you. And as you're heading out the door, there's uh, on the left-hand side, we got a welcome booth. And there's a whole bunch of information about the church. You can exchange that card uh, for that bag. And in that bag, there's some cookies in there. And we thank you so much uh, for being here. All right, I got a few announcements this morning. So uh, we're having our Sky Ranch Scholarship meeting today. And if you are, want to apply for the scholarships uh, for Sky Ranch, there's a meeting after church. And it's going to be right over here in this area of the sanctuary. And parents and children must attend uh, that meeting right after church right over there and this week uh, we're, get, we're getting our floors done we're getting them all resealed and so uh, we, we need some help so right after church uh, we got to move some furniture if I can get some guys to stay and help me and a few other people move some furniture around so that we can get our floors uh, sealed and then Tuesday at 4 30 if you can be here we need to move more furniture around and so we're going to do a whole lot of moving and shaking uh, this week so that we can have all of our floors nice and shiny and all of that. Uh, with that being said, our Tuesday nights uh, for our team roping, everything is going to be outside because the floors are going to be wet and all of that. And so we're going to eat outside. We're going to have our service outside. Everything is going to be outside for Tuesday night. It's going to look the same, but it's just going to be outside. And so at 530, we'll be roping the dummy at 6 o'clock. Uh, the kitchen will be open. We'll just come in like you would for a concession stand. You'd get your food like that. And then at 6.45 is when our service will start. And then we'll, uh, we'll rope 
after that. And so uh, there is no, the church office is closed tomorrow because of all the floors. There's no Wednesday night Bible study or Wednesday morning Bible study. All of that for this week is canceled uh, because of the floors. But starting Friday, uh, we have our ladies' banquet. You know, we've been talking a lot about our ladies' banquet. And there's, there's a, it's finally upon us. And there's a flyer out there, a flyer in your bulletin of information about that. If you're a lady, I would highly recommend that you be here. And then the last one that I have is we have a play day next Sunday. Uh, I, I love play days, and, and uh, it's always fun for that. And it's still eligible. If you come for the next three play days, you're still eligible uh, for the buckles. And uh, if you came out to the trail ride yesterday, we had a good time. There was 20 of us that rode. It was a little chilly, but... Man, we had a blast out there. And I thank everybody who came and who helped and made that possible. But if you would, y'all pray with me this morning. God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for uh, everything that we have. God, I thank you for this place that we get to worship you. And Lord, I pray that that is what would happen today. God, that today would be a day that we can set aside all of our distractions. We can set aside anything that would hinder us into true worship with you. God, be with the band as they lead us in to worship, and God, be with Brother Rod as he brings the message. Lord, would you speak through him in such a mighty and powerful way? And Lord, I thank you for everything that's going on in this place. And Lord, we love you. Amen. Hey, y'all get up and shake somebody's hand. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. Light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love and it wrote my name above. Just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let's tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn it, you will know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes you right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears, but Jesus is friend who watches day and night. Well, I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care. Yeah, just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry. Answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn it. You know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Jesus, let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. Feel a little prayer will turn it. And you know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Yes, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Aren't you thankful for the sunshine after the rain that we got? Grass ought to be kicking in high gear now for sure. Here a while back, I, it's been a good while back now, but I wrote a song, and uh, I've never done it here before because I was waiting on Junior Knight to get back with us on the steel guitar, and uh, so I could do this song. So anyway... He, uh, <laughs> I've had him on the bass for a couple of weeks, so I've caught a lot of grief for that. But uh, anyway, <laughs> he's heckling me behind me right now. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to have him up here playing with us. Somebody asked me this morning, said, is that the same junior night that I saw on TV last night and on RFD? I said, yeah, it is, and we're really blessed to have him playing with us. But yeah, give him a hand. 
Hey, hey Amen. That's great. And uh, but we have uh, I have I had written this song and it it's it's kind of made for a steel guitar. So I'm going to do this song for you at this time. I can't wait another day. Guess it's time for me to change. And I won't spend another night. Now I want to do what's right. I think I'll climb down off this stool. I'm tired of being the devil's fool. I think I'll head back home again Where it should have always been It's time for me to change Yes, it's time for me to change And let God turn my life around Cause I'm so tired of this road I'm on And I know hell is where it's bound God, I put my trust in you Cause I know you pull me through And I won't waste another day Cause it's time for me to change That I put my trust in you I've been set free I feel brand new No, I'm not the man I was I won't go back I've had enough And I wish everyone could see The change he's made in me turn my life around cause it was time for me to change yes it's time for me to change let God turn my life around cause I was tired of the road I've been on and I knew hell is where it was bound Put my trust in you Cause I knew you'd pull me through And I won't waste another day Cause now I finally change Cause I won't waste another day Cause thank God I've been Change. Kit's not with us today. He's sick. Uh, said he's got the COVID. There's really no telling what he's got. But <laughs> anyway, he said he was going to come today and sit outside in his car. So I don't know if he's here or not, but... Uh, uh, kid, if you're here, we miss you, brother. But anyway, so y'all pray for... Is he honking his horn? All right, if he keeps that up, somebody go undo his battery. We're not going to put up with that. Kid, if you can hear me, you stop that. We're not going to put up with that the whole service. All right. Taste. 
Christian soul. I've 
the kind of thing that just breaks a man breaks him right down to his knees God I've been broken more than a time or two oh yes I have then you picked me up and showed me what it means to be a man come on and sing it with us this morning good it was a little cool out this morning when I first got out but that's all right it's all good I want to share a couple things with you this morning uh, that wasn't in the announcements but uh, one that I'm really excited about uh, I got to talk to a pastor Monday one of our pastors here in town and uh, I don't know if many of y'all have heard but there's a deal called sanctuary cities and we want to become a sanctuary city here in the city of Athens for the unborn. And I was talking to a pastor here in town. Hey, give, him, give him a hand. I was talking to a pastor here in town, and he told me, he said, there's three churches that can ha have a major impact on be making Athens a sanctuary city for the un unborn. One of them is Living for the Brand Cowboy Church, 
One of them is Sand Springs Church, and the other one is Life Fellowship out on 175. He said, we have enough people in our congregation that we can make Athens a sanctuary city for the unborn. So that's a good thing. So if you live here in the city of Athens, I'm going to put this out in the foyer. Please sign your name and address, and we're going to contact you, or actually Bill Gallagher will be contacting you, and we're going to have this in a, one of our cultural impact meetings. It'll probably be in August, but we want to push this because as I was talking to one of the pastors, he said, I promise you there's some that have done told me they don't want to, anything to do with this in their church. Get you some of that. <laughs> you think the end times ain't close by? We have to stand up for the unborn. Please come beside me and stand up for the unborn. The other thing I want to mention, and it's, it's still a ways out, but I want to just keep it fresh in your mind. Trey Johnson's going to be here in June to preach a revival, three days. He will be putting on another roping clinic, and I'll get the sign-up sheets out there for that. But the other thing I want to mention this morning is I want to pray for Bill Ingram. He's a man that goes to church with us, and uh, he's in the hospital in Tyler. His health is not real good, but let's pray for him right now. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, I just want to pray right now and lift my brother up, Bill, to you. Lord, I just ask that your hands would be on him, Father, that your healing hands would be on him, Father, that you would open his lungs, that he can breathe, Father, that he can breathe in life. And Lord, I just ask that you'd be in the midst of that room as each and every doctor, each and every nurse comes in contact with Bill, that they would know that we're in, they were in the presence of God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Today I'm going to be in uh, Philippians 4, and uh, please don't fret if you see a lot of scriptures popping up on the screen, because Miss Barbara, I sent her an outline every Sunday, or excuse me, every Saturday morning, and I told her I'm sorry there were so many, but we're going to be in Philippians 4, but it makes me think about how, do we, how can we be joyful in prayer that guards our heart and mind? See, our mind and our heart are, are directly hooked together. It's kind of like peas and carrots, hugging and kissing. They all go together. Y'all not even paying attention. Y'all still asleep in here. Peas and carrots go together, yes? Kind of like hugging and kissing. It goes together, right? All right, our mind and our heart are connected. And uh, I got to, a few years ago, I got to go to a team roping clinic and uh, Tyler Wade was putting it on, and I was talking to him about how he keeps his mind focused. He said, well, I'm going to tell you, when you, try, you get in a truck and a trailer, and you haul for about 10 hours to go to a roping, in a matter of seconds, it's all done, and you missed, and then you get to get back in your pickup and drive back home. He said, you have to be able to control your mind, because they do this for a living. They go from roping to roping, rodeos, just on and on. But if you look at all great athletes, all great businessmen, great pastors, man, you have to be able to control your mind and your heart. Where is your mind and your heart? Because your mind and your heart can control how your day goes. Back in the box and you just miss one for a lot of money, you got to put that behind you. And that was one really neat thing about Trey Johnson when he was here last time. He talked about, and this is what he would do, if somebody missed and you seen that, he seen they got frustrated, he said, okay, we just got to stop. We just got to stop. We're going to praise Jesus that we're getting to be here today. See, we got to get to the point in our life when things are not going our way because the Bible tells me that we're going to face many trials and tribulations in our life. So everything is not always going to go our way. So we've got to be able to control our mind and our heart so we can be good with it. We've got to be able to protect our heart and mind. So I'm going to start at Philippians 4.4. 4. And he writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And then he goes on in verse 8, he says, Finally, brother, whatever is true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, 
whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if any virtue, and if any things are praiseworthy, meditate on these things. He tells us what we need to do in our prayer. Then he goes on and tells us what we need to be doing to keep our mind right. And it's through meditating. So the first thing I want to see, see is in verse 4 it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Do we rejoice in the Lord always? Do we give Him praise even when things are not going our way? Can we say we rejoice in the Lord See, we need to be rejoicing. He says, always. Sometimes always is not going our way. Sometimes always is good, but sometimes always is not good. See, if we're going to truly stand up for God, we've got to rejoice in Him, in Him alone. Paul says that it unites us in all circumstances. See, we can rejoice even when we don't get our way. We can still rejoice. If we're going to truly be a one body of Christ, we've got to be able to rejoice even when things don't go our way. In Romans 12, 12, it says, Rejoice in hope, patience in tribulations, continue steadfast in prayer. See, we've got to get steadfast in prayer. Because most of the time when things are going awry in our life, we try to let ourselves fix it. I try to fix my problems by myself most of the time. I'm just being honest with everybody. Because I, I promise you, I'm a fleshly person. Unfortunately. So I try to fix the problems in my life fleshly instead of doing the first thing that I know to do. But I let things cloud my mind, cloud my thinking, and then my heart gets hardened. The first thing He tells me to do is pray. See, if we'll start getting to the point where we start praying more and worrying less... We can go a long ways. So, but we need to pray. Continuous prayer. That's what he's telling us. Let's pray. And then he goes on in verse 6. He says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Be anxious for nothing. How many of y'all were anxious this morning when you got up? Nobody was anxious? Be honest with yourself. Come on now. We've got we to get to the point that we're honest with one another. Because I get anxious to get up here. My wife says, we live two minutes for the church. There's no need to leave this early. She tells me it every Sunday. But I'm anxious to get up here. Not saying she's not. She's probably staring at me, so I'm not even going to look over there. But see, I get anxious. I want to get up here, and the reason why I want to get up here is because I want to see people. I want to see each and every one of y'all in the congregation because I like visiting with you. But he says, except Wayne. <laughs> Except Wayne. But he tells us not to be anxious. And Paul is referring to worrying. See, the antidote for anxiousness is prayer. In Philippians 4, 11 and 13, he says this, For I have learned in whatever state I am in to be content... Well, there's something that we don't want to, we don't see much. Not much contentment. Because our society says this, it's all about me and I want to go really, 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 really fast all the time. I don't want to be content about anything because it's all about me now. Everybody gets a prize. Well, it's really not that away. He tells me to be content. Be okay with the situation you're in. Maybe God's put you in a situation and He wants you to be content. I shared this with somebody the other day. It's, man, I feel like I'm in, at Niagara Falls standing on a five-gallon bucket sometimes. But he tells me to be content because I know God put me there for a reason. See, God might have you in a position in your life right now and you don't think it's anything's going on that's making your way any easier. But he tells you to be content. 
Are you content with where you're at? I'm not talking about being comfortable because comfort destroys motivation. See, but he wants me to be content where I'm at. Don't worry, be content. And then he goes on, Philippians 4, 11 through 13, and he goes on and says this. I've learned, he says, I've learned to be content. I know how to be a base, and I know how to be a bound. Whatever in all things I have learned, both to, to be full and to be hungry, to abound and to suffer, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's telling me, when you get content... Paul says, I can do all things who strengthens me. He tells me that sometimes we're going to have to suffer. Sometimes we're going to have to be hungry. But we have to learn how to be content in all things. Because he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You need to understand, he says, all things. It doesn't mean it's going your way. It means this, I can do all things through Christ. Man, if you don't get anything today, you've got to get this. It's got to be through Christ. It can't be through man. It can't be through your job. It can't be through your wife. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Where's your strength come from? My strength comes from the Lord. See, we've got, re- we got to rely on Him to the point He is our everything. Amen? All right, so we're going to keep cruising on here. the next part of verse 6, it says, Make your request known. And there's three things here in this prayer that Paul is trying to get us to look at. He's expressing three different aspects of prayer. The first thing he says, Our prayer... with... A worshipful attitude. Do we pray with a worshipful attitude? Are we worshiping God when we pray to Him? See, our attitude can make everything change. The Bible tells me, do not quench the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you what, a bad attitude quenches the Holy Spirit. The children of Israel, walking around in the wilderness, grumbling and complaining is what it says. Bad attitude. See, but we need to be praying worshipful with worshiping Him. Psalms 95, 6 says, Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Do you bow down to God every day? See, if you're bowing down to Him, that means you're submitting to Him. And I learned this quite a few years ago when I first started in to the ministry. I rode lots of two-year-olds, and I had a bronc pen, and it has sides on it. Nobody can see me in there. I worked in there all by myself all day long. And I had this one stud horse that was very, very... He's just hard-headed. I mean, he was, he was pretty rank to be around. And I'd mess with him for a while, and I, do, I would do certain things to make them give to pressure. And I finally got him to put his head on the ground. And it's like this. The Holy Spirit quickens me and says, that's how I want you to honor me. I want you to bow down before me and honor me. I want you to submit to me. See, do we do that? Do we bow down before God every morning and worship Him on our bended knee? Man, it takes time to get it done. But I'm going to tell you, when you start doing things that God's asked us to do, how your life changes drastically. All right, let's move right on. Number two, supplication. It means this, a need and request, a specific concern. Man, when you pray to God, be specific in your prayers. God, I'm hurting. I want you to help me, heal me. Be specific about what you pray for. Because He's a mighty God and He answers our prayers. Don't give Him a generic prayer. Be specific in what you pray. God, help me out with the problems I face today. 
Help me today with the people I struggle with. Be specific in what you pray. Because He hears them. So why not be specific? I'm not real good about uh, beating around the bush about things. matter of fact, it's probably to a flaw. Because I'm not a person that beats around the bush. Because the Bible tells me this. Let your yeses be yes and your noes be no. Be very specific in what you pray for. Quit beating around the bush with God and ask Him to go ahead and deliver you from the problems that you have in your life. Because he, maybe He's just waiting for you to ask. You have not because you ask not. See, if it's truly the will of God and you ask Him, don't you think he, we've got a big enough Father that we bow down to and we serve that He can't deliver you from something in your life? I know He can deliver me. He has delivered me from stuff in my life. Speaking in front of people scared me to death. But i got to remember this one verse. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, I can be delivered from my deliverer that strengthens me. See, we've got to get to the point in our life that when we pray, be very specific in your prayer. Don't beat around the bush with God because He ain't beating around the bush with you. Trust me. And it'd be, have a prayer of thanksgiving. A prayer of gratitude. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice. Pray without ceasing. In everything, giving thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Man, He just wants us to pray to Him and being thankful. That's the will of God for us, for me. Be thankful in what you pray for. Man, I'm just thankful some days I get to get up and go to work. I'm just thankful that I get to come home. I'm thankful that I have a church family that loves me and cares for me. See, we can get in the mully grubs and think, nobody loves me, everybody hates me, I thank all, go eat worms. Big ones, fat ones, little ones, small ones, my, how they wiggle and squirm. How about that? But we can be thankful. But we can be thankful in all things. Be thankful. Thankful that I got a worm to eat, man. Come on. In the very end of that verse it says, and let your requests be known to God. Do you let your requests be known to God? Man, it's very important that we do these three things so we can keep our mind and our heart right. Amen? Nope, about to jump past a note. Verse 7. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Peace that surpasses all understanding. And y'all know about me and Melody's cancer trip and all that that was that was wasn't a lot of fun but it was the greatest time of our life and i truly started to understand the peace that surpasses all understanding how can you stand there when a doctor is telling you that your wife has breast cancer and it's stage three and there's still peace it's only through prayer see I couldn't understand where it come from. I knew where it come from, but I couldn't understand that we could be in peace with the situation. And it comes from Christ. The peace of God, it brings power to endure. Peace calms a troubling situation when expectations fail. Peace guards by keeping anxieties from our heart and mind. Man, if you're worried when you got up today, you probably need the peace of God in your life. And he talks about guarding our heart. See, our heart is something that makes us make choices. But the Bible tells me in, in Jeremiah 17, 9, it says, The heart is the most deceitful thing above all things. 
desperately wicked, who can know it? God knows our heart. That's who can know it. He knows when we go and when we come. He knows everything about what's on the inside of me, where my heart's at at every moment of the day. So we have to protect our heart. Because he tells me it's dis- desperately wicked. Psalms 51.10, it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit in me. See, some of us can have a heart that's very wicked, but why don't we cry out to God and say, Put a new heart into me, God. Put a steadfast spirit in me. It all comes through prayer. We've got to get to the point in our life that our prayer life is way stronger than anything else. And I'll be perfectly honest. My prayer life needs to get more strong. Because of the situations that I get to be involved in these days, my prayer life, and I, I have a lady in this church that prays for me, and like she'll just call me on the phone and say, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm driving down the highway. Okay, I'm going to pray for you. And the prayers that she prays over me is unbelievable. But I can do the same for myself. And I'm so grateful that she prays for me every day. And she'll type them out, and they'll be very, very long. And she'll type them out and send them to me, what she prays for me. But why don't I pray for myself that much? We need to get to the point that we feed ourselves through prayer. We pray for ourselves just as much as everybody else prays for us. But sometimes it makes me think about maybe my heart's not right. And thank goodness I got people that pray for me, that my heart is right, that I can have a a new heart, a clean heart, a a new and steadfast spirit in me. And then he goes on and talks about our mind. The mind controls our attitude. Bad attitude, bad thought pattern. Our attitude controls everything. The greatest example would be Jesus. Look at his attitude when he hung on the cross. Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. The Bible says he didn't have one corrupt word come out of his mouth hanging on the cross. What an attitude. What a mindset. He come, his mindset was this, that none shall perish, but everyone would come to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. None shall perish. That was his attitude. That was the way he thought. Philippians 2.5 says this, Let this be your mindset, which was also in Christ Jesus. We have to have the mindset of Christ. If we're going to have a good attitude, we've got to have the mindset of Christ. We've got to think how He thinks. We've got to walk how He thinks. If you hang around, I'll just be honest, when you hang around people with bad attitudes and a bad mindset, it's going to get on you. Get away from them. Don't be around them. Colossians 3, 1 and 2, it says, Seek things above where Christ is is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Set your mind on things above. Where have you set your mind? Where have you set your mind with yourself? Do you know you're fearfully and wonderfully made? You're made in the image of God? Man, if that don't make you have a better attitude, a better mindset about yourself. Christ died for you. All these things, we can control our mind. We can take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. It's a mindset. And then he goes on in verses uh, 8 and 9. He says, finally, brother, whatever is true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, 
Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if any and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. He gives us the seven areas here that we need to be meditating on. And uh, one time I looked up the word meditate, what it means in the Greek or the Hebrew, I can't remember, it's been a while back. But meditate, and this is what it was, and it really it fit in good to my way of thinking. How many of y'all seen a cow laying underneath a tree? Just kind of chilling out, laying, and how they be chewing on their cud, and they'll go, mm. they'll spit up their cud. That's what the word meditate means. It means to chew on it. Do you chew on these things? And I've got a verse to back up every one of them. See, if we're going to have a, a heart and the mindset of Christ, there's certain things that we've got to think about. Because if you go to looking at the newspaper today, I'll use this one right here, Sanctuary City for the Unborn. we got some people that don't want to stand up for it in the city of Athens, and this is the reason why. We might offend somebody. Too bad. It's got to be our mindset. And the first thing he says is true. Ethical truth. Me and Melody went and seen a guy Friday, and we were looking at all different types of stock in the stock market. Not that we don't have it. We're poor people. <laughs> He's just showing it. But we're looking at all these different things, that stocks that are out there that you can buy, and he showed us some. I said, them right there, I can't do. He goes, what are you talking about? I said, they're not biblically sound what they stand for. There's no way I would invest money in them. Our ethics. What is your ethics? Ephesians 4.25, it says, Therefore put away lying. Let each one of us speak the truth with his neighbor. For we were our members of one body, one another. Man, we've got to speak truth to people. Because our neighbor is our outward nearness. Do we speak truth to one another? The next thing he says, whatever's noble. To be respected. Do you do noble things in your community? Do you do noble stuff at your home? See, if we're going to dwell on something, we've got to be dwelling on these things. Noble. 2 Corinthians 8, 21. Proving honorable things, not, in, uh, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of man. Do you do noble things in the sight of man? And God both. Man, we have to be noble. If we're going to stand up and say we're Christians and walk the walk, man, we've got to be doing noble stuff here at the church, but also outside this walls, in our community, and our household, at school. How we conduct business with people. Are we noble? The third thing is, whatever things are just. Giving, giving people what they deserve. Being fair with people. Are you fair with people? And I always told my kids this growing up. I'm hard but fair. That's what I'd tell them. My son would say, oh, I don't want to go mow the grass. And man... I'm hard but fair. If you want to go do just a hump in town, you want to put gas in your pickup, you're going to get out there and mow the yard. Hard but fair. See, are we fair with people? Deuteronomy says this, Follow justness and justice alone, so that you may live and possess the land that the Lord God has given you. Man, if you want to live here on earth in the promised land, be just with people. Be fair with people. Because God's going to honor you when you're fair with people and you stand up for God's biblical standards. He's going to stand up for you every time. See, we've got to start meditating on these things. And then he goes on. Whatever is pure. 
What is holy in the relationship with God? Are you being holy? Is your living, are you living your life out holy? Set apart? Set apart from this world? Are we continuing to do the same old thing and get the same old result? Matthew 5, 8 says this, Blessed are the pure at heart, for they shall see God. Are you pure at heart? Because right above it, it said, the heart is the most wicked thing. Man, we got to have a pure heart. Do we deal with people with a pure heart when we come in contact? Number five, whatever, whatever things are lovely, meaning praiseworthy. Do we do things that are praiseworthy before God? We have to be doing things praiseworthy. Psalms 96, 4. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Do we praise Him in our actions of our life? Can you say you went out this week and said, Man, i done things that brought honor and glory to Him. That's stuff praiseworthy. Can you say that? If we're going to have a a mind and a heart change, we've got to start thinking different. And then it goes on and says this, if there's any virtue, and the word virtue means this, moral excellency. How's your moral values? That's what he's asking us. How are your moral values? Second Peter 1, 1 5 through 8. It says, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance goodness, to goodness brotherly kindness, brother, brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither, neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of God. In the knowledge of God. He says, these are your things. Do you have virtue in your life? Do you have moral standards that are set up that match up to God's? That's what he's really saying. And he goes on and says, if anything praiseworthy. Psalms 150 verse 6 says this, let everything have breath, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everything that have breath, praise the Lord. If you're sitting in a chair today, you have something to praise God for today. And it might be you just got here. Or you just got to show up to church. That's something praiseworthy. Because as we go through life, it's not going to get any easier. It's not going to get easier. We're going to continue to have a falling away. Things of God are going to be continued to be pushed away. But if we can go to Him with joyful prayer, He's going to guard our heart and our minds through Christ Jesus. And then He gives us seven things for us to meditate on, to chew on, to keep our minds good, correct, just. All your, mindsets, my, all your mindsets come from two sources. You can have a mindset of this world, or you can have a mindset of Christ. It's like this. It's your choice. Everything that the world gives us is this. Chaos. Everything that Christ gives us is this. Peace. So we have a choice to make each and every day when we wake up in the morning. What is my mindset going to be? Am I going to have the mindset of this world today? Or am I going to have the mindset of Christ? That's my choice. He gave me a choice to make. And I choose to be having the mindset of Christ. What's your choice today? And I'll leave you with one other verse. And it's John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you, that you may have peace. In this world, you will have tribulations. 
But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. That's Jesus speaking. Be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. See, if you're in Christ Jesus, you've overcome. You're an overcomer of this world. See, it's our choice to get up every morning and get out of bed and say, what is my mindset going to be, Rod Millsap? Are you going to have the choice of having a mindset of this world that brings total chaos in my life? Or am I going to have peace that surpasses all understanding? Choose for yourself this day who you will serve. Are you going to serve the world or are you going to serve Christ? It's your choice. Who is it going to be? Sounds pretty rough. But that's the choices we have to make if we're going to have the mindset of Christ. If He's going to guard our heart and our minds and give us a peace that surpasses all understanding, we've got to make the choice, who are we going to serve today? Amen? So Wayne, come on up here. Uh, we're going to close. Thank you all for being here today. Don't forget about the sign-up sheet on the Sanctuary City for the unborn. Please start signing up for it, ma'am. It ha yes, ma'am, you do have to live in Athens because it's going to go before the city council to be able... It's going to be a Sanctuary City for the city of Athens. Murkison, Texas has already done it. And if you go to the website, there's all the cities that have already done that. And you can look. And you can look at also the cities that said, no, we don't want no part of it. And then some that are trying to get it passed. So if y'all would, Trey, come on up here, brother. If y'all would please stand. Where are you at today with your mindset? Are you struggling with your attitude? Because Paul gives us all the things that we need to do in the Scripture to change our mindset, to have the mindset of Christ. See, but it all comes through this. It says, through Christ Jesus. If you don't have Christ Jesus living in your heart, you'll never have the mindset of Christ. It only comes from Him. Are you here today and you've never received Christ as your Lord and Savior? Your mind will never change. But when you have the mindset of Christ, when Christ comes and dwells within you, your mind changes, your heart changes, your vision changes. And you can start seeing the things that He has for you. And I'm going to pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, I pray right now for the mindset of this, this congregation. Father, I pray that they would have the mindset of Christ. Father, I pray for the person here today that's never received Christ as their Lord and Savior. This would be the day that their hearts would change. They would ask Jesus to come into their heart and save them. And they believe in their heart that He died on the cross for them. That they may have life and life more abundant. In Jesus' name I pray.